Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Easter morning that God has blessed us to share. We thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Easter day. I invite you to worship with all of your hearts this morning as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection on this Sunday morning. I invite you also to take a moment, if you will, to register your attendance on the welcome cards that are in the pews. We hand those in at any time there is music during our service when we also hand in our offerings to the plates that are in front, which you may also bring to the back of the church uh, as you leave. Um, there's a receptacle there as well. Uh, please know that we have some good news. We have raised over $3,100 for Ukraine relief. And uh, let's celebrate that this morning. If you would like to continue your giving, and it does seem to be continuing from our generous church, uh, you may make a check payable to AUMC with Memo Ukraine. Those gifts go to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and we uh, are helping in that way. So thank you so much for your generosity in this way. We're also celebrating that last Sunday we had a beautiful Easter egg hunt. We'd like to share some images of that. We have Luis and the Easter Bunny. And um, let's bring down the lights for a second, Julissa, if we can, and uh, so we can see these beautiful pictures. And um, we have, uh, there was actually a hawk that showed up to enjoy the festivities. <laughs> and um, we, the bigger kids got to celebrate in the bigger field out back. And a, somebody found a golden egg. I hope it's real. And um, <laughs> we had a great time back, back there in the uh, Easter egg hunt with members of our church and also members of our community. We had egg strata in the morning by many of our volunteers cooked uh, beautifully by them. A petting zoo with llamas to boot. And um, the children just had a wonderful time petting chicks and ducklings and um, enjoying this wonderful celebration. So uh, let's, uh, in, let's uh, thank, first of all, I'd like to, anyone who was involved in helping the, to make that happen, um, would you raise your hand high and let's thank them very much. And a special thanks goes out to Joan Fielder and Coral Mills, who always lead this ministry, as well as um, Pastor MJ Buis. Thank you so much to those leaders of this uh, wonderful event. Um, a couple things about the Easter Sunday celebration that's uh, traditional for our church. People are welcome to, for the final, final song, the Hallelujah Chorus, to come and join the choir and singing in the front. And also, if, you're, uh, if you'd like, yes, Herman has scores, uh, so he has the music. If you'd like to, if you've sung it before, or even if you haven't, come forward and uh, join that, that piece. It's a beautiful way to celebrate the conclusion of this service. You'll come up during the singing of our last hymn. Uh, to get into place up here, and so we can sing together. Um, and it is traditional for those who feel comfortable to stand during the Hallelujah Chorus as we celebrate Christ's resurrection. Um, we also have a prayer shawl this morning on our... Um, well, first of all, this is a wonderful sanctuary. Let's thank the worship team for this beautiful cross. <laughs> and lilies. And now I'm going to go behind this cross, and we are going to pray for this shawl, which is on our altar this morning. This shawl is dedicated to Maria Coronado, and, uh, who is a friend of Vicky and Sandy's, who was diagnosed with cancer recently. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Dear Lord, bless this shawl, the work of loving hands. We give thanks for the hands that have made it, and we pray for Maria, who will receive it. May your spirit embrace Maria through the gift of this shawl. Weave us together in a fabric of Christian love so we may serve your kingdom as one. Amen. Now please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Please join me this morning on this Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.
Our first scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from Luke, chapters 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed by what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, we listen for God's call, and please know that if you are listening on an iPhone, it may have been lost in our bathroom. Um, the usher told me that we have uh, received one there, so um, if you have lost one, please see Craig, who's in the back. Um, and now we listen to God's call through the, the word of God that has been proclaimed in song and in our reading of scripture today. Will you pray with me before I offer a message this morning? Gracious and loving God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The women who visited Jesus' tomb that very first Easter Sunday arrived at the first light of day. One translation of this term is deep dawn, the deepest dawn, right when Night becomes day. Someone once said, deep dawn is that indefinable time when between darkness and light, that time when you decide either that your understanding of life as you know it is true or that it is false. In such moments, we sort of are working out our dreams and deciphering them from our waking life. We're trying to remember what it is about this day that we were trying to uh, set out as, as far as our goals are concerned. We're trying to remember the purpose of our life. We are waking up to decide what we believe and what we don't believe. And for these women who arrived at the tomb, it would have been very hard to believe their eyes. They had been through so much. They had lost their friend, their teacher, their savior, this one who had healed them and forgiven them and loved them completely, with whom they had spent so much time over the past three years, and suddenly he was unjustly tried, he was executed, he was tortured, he was mistreated. He had become so well known in this area, it would have been a terrible trauma, not only for them, but for many people to have witnessed what happened to Jesus. And then to add to this, on that Sunday morning, at deep dawn, they found that his tomb was empty. They came bringing spices, as was the custom of the ancient Jewish tradition, to bring spices to uh, tend to the body of their beloved teacher. They had waited until Sunday because after what we call Good Friday, the sun went down, so the Sabbath began. They were not to do this work yet. They had to wait until the first day of the week, Sunday, at the break of dawn, and they showed up to do that work then. They brought those spices to anoint the body of their teacher. And then they found that his body was not there. We have a lovely picture on the front of our bulletin cover this morning and, and here uh, before us about um, showing that empty tomb, that beautiful scene of Jesus not being present. 
But it would have, of course, been troubling for these women. They would not have understood. They haven't heard Easter sermons yet. They haven't heard the message. They don't know what's happening. So they're confused. And how much more confused when those angels of God, these two dazzling appearing figures before them, show them their presence. And these women fall to the ground. It says they fell and placed their faces to the ground. And these two angels say to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. This is really the question of Easter. Why do we look for the living among the dead? These women had to be lifted to their feet. Their faces were not only in, a, in the tomb, but down on the ground in that tomb. They had to be lifted to their feet so they could start looking for someone alive again. It's as though the angels were saying, you're not going to find him in the dirt. <laughs> you have to look up. You have to li- look for the living among you in the good work that you do, in the discipleship that continues on moving forward. Why do we look for the living among the dead. We might ask ourselves this question. Why do we spend so much time looking at empty things for things that we hope will fulfill us? Why do we seek bad news, hoping that it will somehow cheer us up? I think of our last several years of pandemic living. It seems like the world got worse during this period of time, but I've come to believe that it didn't get worse. We only watched a lot more TV over the last three years. We were focused on uh, news that would sell quickly, and that is generally bad news that is more marketable. And so we all came out feeling like things may have gotten worse, while at the same time we may have been renewed by the rest that we received during this time. We may have gained a new perspective. Perhaps we are like risen people coming out of a tomb, out of this pandemic, embracing life in a new way, using the learnings we have gained to embrace our loved ones with greater love, to work for things that really matter in this life because we've seen more clearly what does matter. Hopefully, this can be a time of resurrection for God's church for God's whole world as we've experienced this together and learned something new about ourselves and about one another. Amen? But in order to do this, we have to stop looking for the living among the dead. We have to start looking among the living for the living. If we are to become ourselves alive again. I was taught this lesson by a wonderful friend of Serena's and mine. Her name is Lisa. And Lisa told me and Serena about a terrible time of depression she experienced. She didn't see any reason to be alive. She was uh, going through some terrible young adult experiences at those times. And she was brokenhearted and depressed. Until she visited uh, a church, actually it was a mega church in Florida. This is about the last place I'd expect to find Lisa, by the way. But she was in a mega church in Florida. And she was surrounded by loving, praying friends. All of a sudden, random, unconditionally loving Christian friends. And they surrounded her with so much support that she came to an epiphany. And that realization, she said, was a simple one. She said, I realized at that moment that I have a choice. If I have nothing else, I have a choice, whether to hope or to despair. I'm just going to make the choice to take the next step, to have hope, to move forward. Even if I can't improve anything in my life, even if I can't improve or change anything about this hectic, chaotic, out of control world I live in, I have that choice to look for what is hopeful. And a remarkable transformation happened in Lisa's life. That first encouraging choice to hope led to the next and to the next. And soon Lisa was, re- Lisa was restored to her true joyful self once again. She's now a United Methodist minister. She felt that call early on. She serves as a pastor in North Carolina and is a dear friend 
of Serena's and mine, the power of that one choice, even in a moment of total powerlessness and despair, these women must have experienced that too as they were brought all the way down to the ground with their faces in the dirt in a tomb. Angels called them to look up. Look up. Just look for the living so that you may be alive again. Throughout my ministry, I've seen that this is true, not only during our lives, but especially at the end of our lives. Sometimes the overwhelming idea of our own passing, especially as we draw nearer to that moment, is so overwhelming that we lose heart. We panic. We are afraid. We might forget all that we were ever taught about loving and praying and serving. We are just anxiety ridden about that aging process and finally the process of our own dying. And what I've learned about finding courage and taking strength in that moment is that we must continue to love. We must continue to live in this lifetime and into eternal life. Especially when we're on that threshold, we are called to love, to pray for others, to be gr grateful, never to let that flame of life and love in our heart to diminish. If we continue to love in that way, we don't fear, even in the face of death itself. St. Paul talks about this in our first scripture reading, which was read for us today. He says, listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Some of us remember these words from Handel's Messiah, which we will also sing the Hallelujah Chorus from at the, at the conclusion of this service. Death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Miraculously, through the love of Christ and the love which we share, that sting is removed. Paul even taunts death, says, where is your victory? Where is your sting? You have no power over me anymore because I look for the living. I hope for life. I continue to love in the way that God loves. In this way, we are alive again and we learn to love in the way we have been taught. And once we come to life in this way, how will we love? What will our lives look like if we are truly risen and resurrected people with the risen Lord? I recently was taught a wonderful lesson by Father Richard Rohr, who writes in his Center for Action and Contemplation these words. The only way that I know how to teach anyone to love God and how I might see myself seek to love God is to love what God loves which is everything and everyone, including you and including me. If we love one another, God remains in us and God's love is brought to perfection in us. Then we love with God's infinite love that can always flow through us. We are able to love things for themselves and in themselves and not for what they do for us. That takes both work and surrender. As we get ourselves out of the way, there is a slow but real expansion of our consciousness. We are not the central reference point anymore. We love in greater and greater circles until we can finally do what Jesus did, love and forgive even our enemies. Love whatever God loves. This power allows us to let the risen Lord's life flow through us so that we are truly alive again. I've been so inspired by this church that in the face of pandemic did not allow death or fear or illness to frighten us into inaction. 
This church responded with wonderful acts of love and generosity. Giving to this church was actually more than ever before. We came out in the black after that first year. It was a miracle how generous people were to the ministries of this church. Also, we doubled and multiplied our food ministries as neighbors in need under the leadership of our provisions team, multiplied our feeding of community members, many of whom had, who had lost jobs at Disney and in other places. We fed many, many people. I heard this last week. We fed, I believe, 180 families or something like that. And this is about how many we do every week now. Thanks be to God and thanks to so many of you who volunteer at Neighbors in Need. And people did creative things. They sent more text messages and ma baked more baked goods and anonymously delivered them to other people's homes to cheer people up, to make sure no one fell through the cracks during those pandemic days. These are the ways we look for love. These are the ways we look for life and come alive again. May we live this way today for the rest of our lives and on into eternity, knowing that even death itself cannot conquer this life, which God has given us in Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God, Christ is risen. Now let us rise as well. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together an Easter song. Let us pray. Spirit of the risen Lord, fall afresh on us today. Grant us your peace which passes all understanding and your love which conquers even the grave. Lift our heads, O God, from our despair. Bring us out from that tomb so that with every breath we breathe, for every light of each new day, we may look for your life among our lives. Strengthen us to make that first bold choice to live, to hope, to love, even as you have loved us. Let us never stop and never surrender to our fears or to even death itself. Gracious God, we pray for your world as we have been through so much together. May we be risen in a new spirit of caring and nurture. May we have a new compassion for the poor, the homeless, and those who suffer injustice. Strengthen your church and revitalize us, your church throughout the earth, and all believers in your love, that we may be one family of God that we may seek peace and overcome evil and war. Come, Spirit of life, revive us with your love and grace. Inspire us with your spirit to serve others in your name so we may truly live with you today and forevermore. Send your spirit, O God, to all who suffer conflict and war. We pray for those who live in fear in Ukraine. Protect them, O oh God. We pray for a miraculous end to this war and that people of faith throughout the earth could stand up to injustice and evil acts of hostility. 
continue to heal the earth of all illness. May this COVID pandemic quickly end, and may all who have lost loved ones be comforted in their grief. Guide your church, Spirit of Christ, as we seek to be your family and your body, to bear the living Christ to all people in acts of service and compassion. Guide us into your future, whatever it may hold. Let us embrace your life amid our lives so that we may never cease to love and to serve. All of these prayers we offer in your name as we lift uh, our silent prayers. Hear our praises, our petitions, and our confessions in this prayer of silence. Amen. We have two young persons with us today who are certainly looking for the living Lord in their lives and who will be confirmed as members of our church today. I invite Chloe's family and Julissa's family to come forward and uh, both of those young women to come forward as we join together. Please turn in your hymnals to page 37 and let us join in this ceremony of confirmation. If you'll come to the baptismal font, please. I'll come down here with you guys. Yes, and their sponsors. Thank you so much. Um, Chloe and Julissa have uh, tr been part of this confirmation class during the season of Lent. That's an ancient tradition that in preparation for Easter, uh, people would prepare to declare their own faith in Christ. So we are so happy and um, joyful today to welcome Chloe and Julissa this morning as members of the church. They are making this profession for themselves. They were baptized at a younger age, and now they are confirming this faith for themselves. So let us welcome them as family members in Christ and members of our church. We'll begin on page 37, um, where it says confirmation and reaffirmation of faith. Chloe, if you'll come forward, and Julissa as well. Chloe, remember your baptism and be thankful. Julissa, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Now let us pray for Chloe. Will you lay hands on Chloe as we offer this prayer? Chloe, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's pray with Julissa. Will you lay hands on her, please? Thank you. Julissa, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we continue on the next page with some questions for Julissa and Chloe. As members of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation of the United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. 
we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the God of all grace, who has called us to the eternal glory in Christ, may God establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live forever in grace and peace. Let us welcome our sisters in Christ, Chloe and Felicia. Thank goodness for her. We want to thank, thank, be thankful for these young people who have just joined us, but let us pray now for those who are not with us this morning, those who are homebound. We want them to know that they are loved and surrounded by God's love each and every day. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And we want to have a special prayer this morning for those in the military, all people who serve in the military, but especially those that are associated with this congregation. May they come home safely. May their families know that they are safe. And may there be peace throughout this world. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And we pray for the mission of this church, the mission of this church is to bring people to Jesus Christ and to serve those in our community. And we are so thankful for all that is done, the, the food pantry, the remedy shell that provides goods throughout the year for people who are in need. Lord, in your grace, hear yes. our prayer. And Father, we pray especially this morning with Jill Gray. She has a joy. She says, finally, she is going to get to, we are going to get to celebrate her husband Dennis's life on Saturday, April the 30th at 11 o'clock. And she says it marks two years since Dennis has left us and gone to be with the Lord. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And I want to pray for Shirley this morning that she has healing in her body, that, that things will get better, and that she will be able to jump and join with and all of the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And I pray also this Sunday, on this special Easter Sunday, Lord, for all those that could come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and have them in, his, in their life and to know that they are loved by many. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let us continue in worship, coming forward with your offerings as you are able and listening to this marvelous piece of music.
Now let us, let us go from this place looking for God's love and loving as we have been loved. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with us now and forevermore. Happy Easter.